Good afternoon, everybody. I would first like to thank uh, Dr. Priya Jagya uh, for inviting me to be talking to you all today. And also would like to congratulate the organizing team for putting together such a fantastic show. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about role of cardiac MR in post-op assessment of congenital heart disease. My objectives are very straightforward. I'm going to be talking to you about what is special about congenital heart disease post-op imaging. How is it different from pre-op imaging? I'm going to be talking to you about the need for imaging in these cases. And then I'm also going to be talking to you about when to choose CT or MRI or what parameters actually help you in choosing one modality from the other modality. Post-op imaging is different from pre-op imaging because the anatomy has changed. The anatomy that the child was born with has now been modified by the surgeons and there is a new anatomy that we need to investigate and report on. Also, these patients are likely to require repeated examinations. So we need to be prepared to be doing these same examination again and again, but in such a manner that the amount of time spent by the child in the MR magnet is least and we get the most information out of it. Also, remember that every post-op case of congenital heart disease, there is a specific question that needs to be answered. And it is very important that us imagers are aware of what that specific question is and we should be answering that in our reports and focusing our imaging such that we are able to find answers to that specific question. Having an echocardiogram before the cardiac MR is very, very important because it helps you to focus your examination to a specific area of interest rather than saying we will do everything and we will then decide on what further imaging to be done. CT works in the principles of scanning and then doing all the reconstructions. With cardiac MR, I think it is important that you understand the anatomy to an extent before you start the scan and you understand what specific questions are asked. Therefore, knowing what the surgical history is also very, very important in curtailing the cardiac MR examination in these patients. The most common pathologies that one may come across, especially in India, is repair of tetralogy of fallot. So intracardiac repair patients or someone who's had something like a BT shunt put in. The next most common indication is likely to be coarctation of iota and follow-up of these patients. You may also come across patients with transposition of great arteries or single ventricle repair. In these patients, again, a myriad of findings may be there and it is important that we do the correct examination and answer all the relevant clinical questions. It is also a standard practice when the patient is being handed over from a pediatric cardiologist to an adult kind of cardiologist who is going to be managing this patient henceforth there is usually a takeover and a handover scan which gives a baseline for the adult cardiologist to understand and build upon from there onwards. Which modality is better, cardiac MR or CT? Well, the answer is not very simple and the answer is based on multiple parameters. Children about the age of eight years are usually okay to undergo cardiac MR without any sedation. While children who are younger than eight years may often require sedation or even intubation in some specific scenarios. Also, what facilities are available at your place, whether you have a good anesthetic support, do you have an MR compatible uh, ventilator to do your scans and to intubate the child if required, are important parameters which help you in making a decision whether to do CT or MR. The other important parameter is what is the clinical question? We know CT is fantastic in anatomical information while MR is very good in morphology as well as functional analysis. 
So if a flow or a function is interest is the question of interest, then MR would be a better test. While if it's anatomy, then CT might be a better test. One thing always makes a big difference in this decision making is the fact that these patients are likely to require multiple further examinations, whereby CMR not having any ionizing radiation does a fantastic job. Now let's look at specific clinical conditions. Tetralogy of fallow. The surgery done here is intracardiac repair, whereby we close the VSD and also we make a annular patch across the right ventricular outflow tract and create a new route for the pulmonary artery. These children eventually end up having pulmonary regurgitation and require follow-up MRI scans. The specific questions that we need to answer in these children is what is the size of the left ventricle what, and the size of the right ventricle and its function. It's also important to look at the right ventricular outflow tract to see if it is good if it's stenosed or if there is any flow acceleration. Pulmonary regurgitation is a known complication and an expected complication. It's very important to quantify the degree of pulmonary regurgitation in these patients. Similarly, tricuspid regurgitation and to look at the pulmonary arteries and aorta to make sure that there is no stenosis in these patients. So when we look at a tetralogy of fallow, this is pre-op imaging cardiac MR. This is where you are seeing there is a VSD and there is an overriding of the iota across the VSD. Uh, a different patient with the same VSD in a four chamber view. So right ventricle, left ventricle, and this is the VSD that you're looking into. In a post-op scenario, what you're looking at here, the RV tends to dilate. The function is usually well maintained. There is usually some degree of tricuspid regurgitation. But what is more interesting is the right ventricular outflow tract. If there is good flow across the right ventricular outflow tract, is there any stenosis or not? And then the pulmonary regurgitation. And you can see here the blood which flows forward also comes back here as part of pulmonary regurgitation. And it is essential to quantify this with phase contrast MR examinations. So when we look at tetralogy of fallow post repair, these are the parameters which are prognostically important. An RV end diastolic volume, which is indexed to the body surface area in females should not be more than 172 and in men should not be more than 185. At this level, we start to do next surgery, which is usually pulmonary valve replacements. LV systolic function, if it's less than 55, it's a poor prognostic feature. And again, pulmonary regurgitation fracture. A lot of these children, you may see a PR or pulmonary regurgitation fraction of 60%, 55%. So these are important parameters which decide on the next surgery for these patients. Next comes is coarctation of iota. This is something we've all got used to. It is very important that we do the imaging to answer where is the narrowing? How far is it away from the left subclavian artery? What is the anatomy of the arch? And again, is the stenosis significant or not? And if there are any collaterals? You know, uh, you may have some funny uh, grafts put in as part of the surgery where you could see this was a child who had near total interruption of the iota and they got a surgical graft put in between the subclavian to the descending iota and that seems to be doing the great job. Well, this was a patient who'd been having balloon coarctoplasties and this is just a follow-up. Important feature with MR is the ability for us to be able to quantify the flow across the area and also estimate the degree of stenosis by looking at the maximum velocity of flow across there. When you look at this, you may think that it doesn't look too bad. There is narrowing of the iota here. But when you look at the flow turbulence across in this Q flow images, it is obvious that it is a significant stenosis in this patient. 
transposition of great arteries is a complex congenital heart disease whereby uh, different surgical options are available, either an arterial switch operation or an atrial switch operation. And it is important when we look at these patients is to look at the biventricular function and size in follow-up. We are looking at the outflow tract, making sure that there is good uh, flow across the aorta as well as the pulmonary arteries, looking at the conduits, depending on what surgery has been done, and if there are any collaterals. So let's look at this case. This is one such case where you can see morphological right ventricle, morphological left ventricle. This happens to be the systemic ventricle connected to the aorta. So the pulmonary veins have been redirected into the right system here. So the patient gets good uh, systemic arterial supply through a oxygenated system coming from the lungs. And MR is excellent in looking at these uh, images, quantifying the flow and giving all the required clinical information. Let us look at another physiology. This is a single ventricle physiology whereby the ventricles were not thought to be good enough size to have a left and a right ventricle in a surgical scenario. Therefore, a single ventricle is left, which is usually supplying to the iota. Thereby, the blood from the upper limbs is uh, shifted across to the uh, pulmonary arteries through what is called as a bidirectional glen shunt. And you can see here, this is the left SVC, which is draining into the pulmonary arteries. And then as a next stage of the procedure, we do what is called as Fontan surgery, where the IVC is then connected into the pulmonary arteries. So this is a total cavo pulmonary shunt. So SVC to the pulmonary artery, IVC to the pulmonary artery. And that way, it's a single ventricle physiology. Again, a complex uh, condition, but MR is very, very important to look for pulmonary venous compressions to look for the fontan circulation and see if the fenestrations with the heart are patent or not. Also look for all the outflow tract and if there are any venous venous collaterals. So you can see here in this patient some of these collaterals which develop from the upper body to the lower body between the venous systems suggesting increased pressure in the pulmonary arteries. So in summary, each specific scenario each post-op scenario will have a series of specific questions which one has to answer. So know what this question is and please answer. Volume when you require or if you require studies to be repeated again and again and you need dynamic information, MR is the modality of choice. If you're purely looking for anatomical information and you do not have sophisticated backing up system from the anesthetist, then perhaps CT can do the job for you as well. Tetralogy of follow and coarctation post-op cases is something I believe everybody should be doing. You don't necessarily need any complex equipment, but as long as you have the knowledge and interest, you will do a fantastic job. Thank you very much for patiently listening.